How's it going guys? It's Poetry Stud and welcome to a guide I'm going to be doing on how to form the Netherlands in U4. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started and just look at the map for a second. So if you don't know, the Netherlands historically, ooh, that's not where I want to go. The, Nor the, 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 the Netherlands historically were a small nation located right here. Uh, they were called the Netherlands because it means the lowlands and they were the lowlands of the Rhine River. The Rhine River comes right up through here. And this is where it lets out into the North Sea, into the English Channel, and this area right here. And uh, the estuary and the area around it was all low land, lowlands. It was marsh and stuff, and uh, farmland, and it was very fertile land. Um, but it uh, was called the Netherlands, and it, it, that's because it was a German word. And so we're going to be talking about how to form the Netherlands. The Netherlands are very interesting and fun. Oh, um, one of my friends is messaging with me. Don't worry about it. The Netherlands are very fun because they are a very, very powerful trade power, even though they're so small, which is really interesting. I'll talk about that more. But they're also a very big colonial power if you choose to go that route. Or you can be a big European military power. It's very interesting, all the routes that you can go with the Netherlands. And that's why they're one of my personal favorite nations and why. I'm going to be telling you guys how to make them. So I'm going to be talking about two different ways. So what does it take to create the Netherlands? First off, you have to have a certain culture. The two cultures you have to have are either Dutch, which is the the, the culture, excuse me, the culture in Friesland, Gelray, Utrecht, Holland, Zeeland, and Breda. The culture in these provinces is Dutch. Or you can have Flemish as your primary culture. The culture is Flemish in Calais, Vlaanderen, Ghent, and Antwerpen. Basically Flanders, and I believe possibly Brabant as well. I do not remember exactly, so don't hold me to that. But I know these three, I think Calais is as well. Um, and so anyway, so those are the two, that's one criteria. You have to have one of those cultures as your primary culture in order to be able to form the Netherlands. So, what are the two ways that we can form the Netherlands? Well, first, I kind of just want to load in the game. So we're going to go ahead and play as Holland, because they're one of the classic ones, in my opinion. Uh, and I will explain more. I'm not even going to play as them. I'm probably just going to use them as a pointer, just so I can actually click on stuff and show you guys stuff better than I can on the loading in map screen. Uh, it'll be a lot easier for me to do that. And, uh, yeah, we'll, so we'll just wait a second. So... The, I'll tell you guys why the uh, the Netherlands is my favorite um, nation. It, I really like it because there's it's so versatile and you can earn so much money. And money is fun to have in U4. Um, anyways, so here we are. So basically, let's go look at culture real quick because I, I want to show you guys what I was talking about. So if we look at culture, we, we're all part of the German culture, but that's not really what matters. What we want to look at is, uh, can we see it? Yeah, so Flemish. Flemish is from here to here, so it's all this big swath. And Dutch is from here to here, I'm pretty sure. I don't think this is Dutch. This is Flemish, so it goes all the way to Limburg. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, I don't want to misinform you guys. So, what are the two ways that we can do this? Well, I'll tell you one way. So first off, you can tell that Holland, Breda, and Flanders, this area, is a big chunk of land. Uh, if you played any EU4, though, recently at least, you know that these nations, Brabant, Holland, and Flanders, all start in a personal union under Burgundy. So this is very um, annoying, unless you begin to say that. If you're trying to form the Netherlands as one of these nations, you could play as Flanders or Holland or uh, Brabant, and they're all fairly distant starts, but how are you going to do anything if you can't declare a war? So that's one problem that I will get to later when I get more in depth with that. The other way is to play as one of the other three Dutch miners that start independence. So there's only three other people that you can really play as. There's uh, six options in total, but yeah, so Friesland, Gelray, and Utrecht. These are all one province miners. They're all part of the empire, as are all of these, except for Flanders, I believe. Yes, and uh, Brabant is a part of the empire, yes. Um, but anyways, these are the only other three, and uh, the strategy for these, I'll just tell you the strategy for these, because I think that's probably like the, the easier of the two strategies. The strategy for any of these is the same as it is with any HRE nation. You want to become friends with the Emperor, become friends with several other powerful people. So in other words, if I was playing as Friesland, I might want to become friends with Brunswick, or the Hansa, uh, or uh, Hess, Saxony, and Austria probably too, because they're most likely going to be the Emperor. Um, but then, beyond that, you just want to eat more territory until finally you have enough to take on the big guys like the Burgundian blob. 
Um, that is the main strategy for that. Hopefully, uh, and this relates to the uh, other strategy, hopefully the personal union is broken. And so that takes me to, what if you want to play as Holland? Holland was, you know, the main province of the Netherlands, the capital of the Netherlands. And it's a very, very strong start of a nation, as well as Flanders. I would say Flanders even has an upper hand due to the fact that they have the uh, coastal center of trade and a little bit more land. Even though Holland, the province of Holland is such a good uh, province. Both of them are very, very powerful nations to start as. But what do you... How do you get free of Burgundy? So there's a couple ways that you can do this, and lots of it comes down to luck. So I'm not going to pretend like you really have that much say over it. So basically, the way a personal union was, is broken in this game, if you don't know, is if the person holding the union dies, if their king dies, while they have negative prestige. So you can see their prestige right here in this screen. They currently only have five. So obviously you don't have that much. Now what you can do is you can help them or you can make them not really help them you're actually doing the opposite. You can actually make them lose prestige. And uh, basically prestige if you don't know this if you're fairly new prestige is lost in EU4 when you lose battles and that's the main thing. It decays naturally but it'll never decay past zero um, and just like it will never decay up above zero. But um, the way to get prestige down is to beat people up and uh, in battles and when people lose battles they lose prestige so what does this mean for you basically what this means is when burgundy goes to battle and now this strategy is a little bit i would say you don't even have to do it but if you want to like try to speed it up especially if they're only sitting at a small number like this one thing you can do actually is um well basically what you want to do is i'm, I'm just going to like make you the basics basically you want to just make Burgundy lose over and over again. And this will do a couple of things. Not only will the prestige go down, uh, but beyond that, it'll also give it a chance where if someone beats them up enough, they might make the Burgundy release you. So there's a couple of different ways you can get free, and those are them. But I would say the main thing is just don't help them in their wars. Just let them be and try to do everything in your power to actually sabotage them. There's really not much you can do. I don't even think you can... If you lose your own troops... It actually doesn't even uh, do anything at all because you have a separate prestige pool. But um, don't help them and basically just let Burgundy die. Try to inflict as much pain and not help them as much as possible. So that's basically how you break free a Burgundy. Now this can take up to 50 years. I've been playing one Holland uh, into Netherlands campaign where it took me until like 15 Oh, 06 to get free of Burgundy. And that's okay, because you'll have plenty of time to do stuff later on. The Netherlands in real life actually didn't really exist officially until the 1650s or so, and uh, they they still had a huge impact on the European uh, the European theater of things, I guess, and the sphere of influence they had was ginormous, uh, all the way down towards uh, World War One. So, what do you do when you break free? Well, assuming that Brabant and Flanders have also broken free, uh, there's a couple things you got to remember. And I'm focusing more on this route instead of these, because if you're these, it's just like any other nation you have for, whereas these, it's a little different. So if you break free, you're most likely going to want to... You're, um, basically, when you start out... Uh, sorry, it's taking me a minute to get my thoughts together. I'm sorry. Brabant and Flanders are most likely going to hate you. And this happens, I don't know why, but whenever they, you all break free at the same time, then they're like, we don't like you and stuff, because you're a rival in their area. It kind of makes sense. Um, so you don't want to do this. Burgundy will mo most likely be friendly with you. And this is because they still view you as their subject. They're like, hey, we like you guys. You should come back to us. So there's a couple different things you can do here. You don't need any of the Burgundian land to form the Netherlands, because like we said, we only need uh, a whole bunch of the Dutch lands. And in fact, to form it, you need... Let's go look right now. To form the Dutch nation, you need Breda... Breda? Breda? <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Zeeland, Holland, Utrecht, Jelre, Friesland. You only need this little chunk right here. So that's all you need to form the Netherlands, and you need Admin Tech 10. Uh, but you most likely are going to want to conquer all this eventually. And one reason why is that when you form the Netherlands, you actually get a claim on everything with Flemish culture or uh, Dutch culture. But you already have all the Dutch culture stuff. Um, you know, it's a requirement. So basically, that stretches from here down to Luxembourg and across to Vlaanderen or Calais, one of the two. And it's just like this line right here, you get claims on all of that. Uh, even stuff that's not um, 
that's not Dutch or Flemish. You get Wallonian culture, I believe, is also included in this because it's like the upper lowlands. Um, so what strategies can you do to be ready to start taking over all the stuff that you have claims on right when you break free? Well, first of all, you're probably going to want to rival the two of the people next to you. Uh, maybe grab some of the other small provinces in here. Um, go into trade map mode. You can see English Channel you already, strong, you already have a strong presence in, but it might be good to get a presence in Lubeck or in Champagne, definitely, which you'll probably get that anyways eventually. Another good thing would be to ally France or England. One of these two great powers will probably want to be your friend anyways. Um, starting off, you're going to be pretty small, but as you get bigger especially, you're going to have a good friend in either France or England. You want to choose one. Um, this will help for several reasons, one of which being eventually you might want to turn on Burgundy. You'll probably want to, in fact. And France usually hates Burgundy. Like, for instance, this game. Yeah, they rivaled Burgundy. What a surprise. No one is surprised by that. Um, England as well probably does it more often than not, yes. Um, not as much, I would say, but England or France would be a good choice, I would say, as a, of an ally, as well as the Emperor, you know, all that sort of thing. But it's basically like any other game once you get to this point. So, yeah, that's pretty much the basics of how to form the Netherlands, and I'll say just other strategies for playing as the Netherlands is you don't necessarily even need to feel like you need to blob out much. I've played games as the Netherlands where I've stayed this general size for, like, 100, 150 years and not really done anything here, and that's because I've been focusing on the new world. I've been colonizing all of it, pretty much. Not actually all of it, but a lot. You can reach China, you can do whatever you want, and you'll never run out of money. You have so much economic power, especially if you make it down to Calais and to Cal and, uh, and you could even try to you know, do an amphibious invasion of England. All this stuff is possible, and you're always going to have so much money. And um, that's one of the great things about the Netherlands, is that they have so much development in, this, in these provinces. The, it's one of the richest areas in Europe. Besides Italy, I would say it is the richest. Holland has 21 development. Zealand has 19. Oh, did not mean to click on that. Brabant, Brabant has 20. Antwerp is 19. Massive amounts of development, development contained in this. Like, Champagne is pretty good. Uh, let's look at, like, but most of the French land is just average, you know? It's just that their size is what makes up for it. Whereas your land is all very, very rich, rich, fertile land that is very good for creating a strong economic base. And I would say that is one of the best parts about playing the Netherlands. You never run out of money, and you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can be land power, naval power, colonial power, trade power. Um, it's really fun. I would recommend trying it out. Hopefully this guide has helped. It's just basically general strategies. There's not one in particular thing you need to do uh, or that might necessarily help. Lots of it is luck based as is lots of EU4. But um, I hope this guide has helped you. If it has, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe for more. And I will hope to see you next time and I hope this guide helps. Goodbye.